Skeletons of the Marital Closet by Wen Tang Tang. Chapter 1831. I know, but we have to divorce. It's the only option. Gail's voice choked up more as she spoke. She lowered her head, looking at the hems of their clothes. Once they were so intimate, they were now so distant. She even felt that it was not right for her clothes to touch his, so she reached out and separated their hems. Sean's heart clenched painfully. What could he do to her? Hurt her? Scold her? Lock her up and let her calm down for a few days? Sean could not bring himself to do any of those things. If she suffered a little, he felt tenfold the pain. I won't agree to a divorce never. Gail, every step we've taken to get to this point has been so difficult. How could I possibly let go and let you leave me? Sean said. Without Gail, Sean was just a walking corpse. He had no soul. Living meant nothing without her. Do you remember the last time you jumped into the sea and left me? Four years went by in a flash. Gail, every day and every night of those four years was torture. Sean did not want to go through that kind of life again. Every version of the future in his mind had her in it. Back then, he thought Gail was dead. With death separating them, he could not have her. Knowing that she was on this earth, how could he ever let her go? Divorce was far from his mind. Gail, I am with you forever. Sean squeezed her shoulders, his grip involuntarily tightening. Gail gasped, and he quickly let go, and then forcefully pulled her into his arms. She pushed against his chest, resisting, unwilling to stay in his embrace. Sean held her tightly, his large hands gripping the back of her head. Don't think about leaving me, don't try to walk away from me. Gail, not in this lifetime, nor in the next. Gail closed her eyes. Just a second later she opened them again, and continued struggling. Let go, don't touch me Sean, she pounded on his chest. I'm not worthy of your kindness. You should give up on me. If you're not worth it, then who is? Sean replied. There are plenty of women in the world. You can have anyone you want. Forget about me. Sean, forget about me. Heaven knew how much it hurt Gail to say those words. Pushing Sean away, pushing away her husband, the person she loved the most. Sean whispered in her ear. But in the world, there's only one Gail. Those words completely shattered Gail. He still loved her so much, treated her so well, and cherished her as if she were one of a kind. She started to cry. Why Sean, why you love me so much? Why does fate play such a cruel joke on me? It gave me the best of you, but made this happiness so short-lived. Why? Let me experience it, but not let me have it forever. I'm sorry, Sean, I'm sorry. I didn't know this would happen. I was just having dinner with Ivy. How could I end up going to a hotel with Oram and... and sleeping together? Chapter 1832 I really can't remember anything. Gail cried bitterly in Sean's arms. She vented her emotions, crying and fussing, while Sean held her quietly. Instead of bottling it up inside, he wished to see her let out her sadness, pretending to be calm and composed while silently digesting those negative emotions. He thought her emotional release was better. This was the first time Sean did not wipe away Gail's tears. He let her cry. Maybe if she cried enough she might feel better. Truth be told Sean could not bear to hear her cry. His eyes were slowly turning red too. A man does not shed tears easily. At this point, he knew he could not be weak or cowardly. He had to be the pillar of strength for Gail and be her safe haven. With closed eyes, Sean rested his chin on her head, gently patting her back. Gradually, Gail's crying subsided. Gail, things haven't been clarified yet, so don't jump to conclusions. It's impossible for anything to happen between two unconscious people. The only explanation is if Oram wasn't unconscious and was awake, he said. Gail choked out a reply. He passed out before I did. I saw it with my own eyes. I had not even had time to care about him. Then, I started feeling dizzy. A flash of murderous intent flickered in Sean's eyes. Oram's plan was flawless. He gained Gail's trust and shifted all the blame away from himself. After he failed to break them apart with the intimate photos, Oram immediately started planning this. Did Oram want Gail this badly? Was this love? Clearly, it was just a selfish desire to possess her without truly caring about Gail's feelings. Gail, rest for now, have a good sleep. I've sent people to investigate the whole situation. I'll inform you of any progress or results as soon as possible, 
Sean said. Gail remained silent. Sean lowered his head to look at her, only to see tears on her eyelashes. Without much thought, he leaned in and gently kissed away her tears. His lips slowly descended to find hers. He wanted to prove with actions that he did not despise her, nor did he think she was dirty. It was just her own perception. Gail tried to turn away. At this moment, the last thing she wanted was to kiss Sean. She felt unworthy of even staying in his arms. The more Gail tried to escape, the more Sean wanted to kiss her. He forcibly held her head, pinched her chin, and kissed her bit by bit. Mmm. Sean. Good girl. No, don't. Be a good girl, Gail. Sean's words were the gentlest, but his actions were forceful and domineering. As Gail's body slowly relaxed and weakened, he became gentle, tasting her softly. Gail weakly clung to his shoulders. She knew he did not want to kiss her, he just wanted to tell her he was there, he still loved her. There was no trace of disdain for her in his heart and actions. Gail wondered what good deeds had she done in her past life to deserve such a wonderful husband. Chapter 1833 They were entangled. Go to sleep first, rest well, and regain your strength. Sean tucked her in. Gail, you do not want Joshua and Nicole to come back and see you like this. They'll worry about you. Gail's resolve returned. She is a mother. If they divorced, what would happen to Joshua and Nicole? Would they have to choose between their father and mother? Okay, do not overthink it. Come to the study if you need anything. Sean saw through her thoughts. Gail nodded. Sean squeezed her hand again. He noticed it was cold. After warming it up, he left the master bedroom. Gail lay in bed, staring at the ceiling. The familiar bedroom was comforting to her. It carried a comforting scent. However, she could not sleep. She dared not. She was afraid that she would be somewhere else again when she opened her eyes. Gail wondered if she did really have sex with Oram. All signs indicated that she and Oram were no longer just ordinary friends, but Sean made sense. If both she and Oram were unconscious, how could they have sex? Paul and Ivy did because Paul was sober. Was Oram perhaps not unconscious? However, that did not seem possible. Her mind was a mess, and the situation was complicated. Gail curled up and unknowingly drifted into sleep. In the study, Sean stood with his hands behind his back, looking as intimidating as the aura he exuded. Mr. Wood. His subordinate walked in. Speak, how's the investigation going? The subordinate reported. The restaurant surveillance is completely destroyed. It cannot be fixed. The hotel footage is too old, we have the footage, but it's impossible to discern and make out anyone. So. So what? Cannot find any leads, can't find anything at all. The subordinate trembled, hastily saying, we questioned the hotel owner. He kept saying he could not remember that the lights were too dim at night, and there were too many people. Sean suddenly turned around, and his gaze pierced through the subordinate. He lowered his head. It's my fault. I did not do my job well. Useless, all useless, Sean cursed. How could nothing be found at such a critical moment? What about Oram? After leaving the hotel, what did he do, where did he go? Sean asked sternly. Oram sent Ivy home, then went back to his own home, and has not left since. He still had the mood to send Ivy home. He thought that must be because Ivy was his pawn. With Ivy's dinner invitation, Gail came to the restaurant, allowing Oram to make his move. Before, Sean had suspected Ivy was on Oram's side. However, after learning that Ivy had been taken advantage of by Paul last night, he understood Ivy was the real victim. Oram was the mastermind. Ivy was completely unaware and became Oram's pawn. Now, the most tricky problem was that Oram portrayed himself as the victim, gaining Gail and Ivy's trust. Paul was conveniently labeled as the scumbag. Chapter 1834 For Sean someone like Paul was simply not worth his time. Paul had hurt Ivy, and Sean had no connection or obligation to Ivy. Sean paced back and forth in his study, brows furrowed. Is there no other clue in the restaurant besides the surveillance footage? Anything suspicious in the private rooms or the dining booths? Sean asked. According to Gail's account, she and Ivy had been dining in a booth by the window. Just before finishing their meal, Oram arrived, supposedly to meet Paul in one of the private rooms to discuss film investment. Then, the three of them went to the private room, only to suddenly feel dizzy, 
and lose consciousness. Paul remained conscious. So, it sounded like the problem lay with the meal at the booth? Did Orem sneakily drug them while Gail and Ivy were not paying attention? However, the booth was under surveillance, capturing every moment clearly. Orem had no chance to tamper with anything. Just as he was thinking, his phone rang. Mr. Wood, we found a suspect in the restaurant, Fiona said. A suspect? Yes, a waiter confessed, and we found evidence. Sean frowned. A waiter? He knew perfectly well that Orem was behind all this. This waiter must be the scapegoat Orem had pushed forward. Nevertheless, they still needed to interrogate him thoroughly. Bring him here right away, Sean ordered. Yes, Mr. Wood. Sean tossed his phone aside and pressed on his temples. The moment he saw Orem and Gail lying together on a bed, naked, he was angry, terrified, and even wanted to destroy everything. Then he wanted to conceal everything, not letting Gail know. It had been several hours since the incident occurred, and Sean was gradually calming down. He increasingly felt that Orem had not actually had sex with Gail. He hypothesized that Orem was deliberately lying, pretending to be clueless. Logically, from analyzing the timeline, Orem would not have had time to harm Gail. There was exactly half an hour between when Sean's bodyguard found the hotel and when Orem, Gail and Ivy left the booth and headed to the private room. Within this half hour, it would take at least 20 minutes, even if they rushed from the restaurant to the hotel. So, Orem and Gail were only in the hotel room for 10 minutes. How could Orem be finished in 10 minutes? For Sean it was more important to prove Gail's innocence now than to expose Orem. Gail could not bear it. She would have all sorts of terrifying thoughts. He could not let her go on like this. She even mentioned divorce. Chapter 1835 Soon, Fiona brought the waiter in. Mr. Wood, he's here. Do you want to interrogate him? Fiona said. Sean glanced at the waiter. He was tall, thin, and utterly unremarkable. What did he say? Sean asked casually, taking out a cigarette and holding it between his lips. He really wanted to smoke to ease his frustration. However, he did not want Gail to smell the smoke on him. Fiona kicked the waiter. Kneel down and repeat what you confessed earlier. The waiter trembled and said, I didn't mean to target Mrs. Mrs. Wood. I didn't know she was Mrs. Wood. I'm nobody. How would I recognize a wealthy person like your wife? My target was only Ivy. Sean narrowed his eyes. Ivy? Yes, she's a beautiful female star with a great figure. Even when she wore sunglasses and a hat, I recognized her instantly. I'm her super fan. I have watched many of her movies. I never thought I could see her in person. The restaurant has rules. I can't bother the guests, let alone take photos. I liked her so much so. So I put some drugs in the tea. Mr. Wood, I swear I just wanted to see Ivy. When I saw them leaving the booth and going to the private room, I waited outside, watching the private room. When I heard them fainting one by one, I went in from the side door of the private room where the food was served and knocked out the man who hadn't drunk the tea. Sean listened expressionlessly. Go on, the waiter swallowed nervously. Well, as for what happened later, you, you already know. You wanted Ivy, didn't you? How did Paul manage to succeed then? Sean asked. Yeah, but I didn't expect him to wake up so soon. I was afraid he would see me and expose me. At that time I was scared and realized I had caused trouble, so I just ran away. I didn't expect that you'd find me. It was a ridiculous and unbelievable tale. How would a waiter get drugs? How did he manage to move four people to the hotel? Moreover, how did a waiter have the ability to destroy surveillance footage? Sean walked straight up to the waiter and dropped a knife in front of him. Mr. Wood. What, what is this? The waiter asked. Your life hangs in the balance at my whim. No, please, I, I apologize, I'll bow to you. I didn't do anything to your wife. She was with another man in the next room. I never even went in. She just drank the tea and woke up after the effects of the drug wore off. I shouldn't be punished so severely, should I? Sean said coldly, keep lying. The waiter kept babbling. I really didn't, Mr. Wood, it's true. If I had known your wife was dining with Ivy, even if I had a hundred lives, I wouldn't have dared to do it. Sean squatted down, slowly picking up the knife. His fingertip grazed the sharp, clean blade. What did Orem offer you? Sean raised an eyebrow. How did he make you cooperate like this, that you'd be so loyal and not confess even in the face of death? He lifted the knife, 
pressing it against the waiter's face. It was a chilling scene. The waiter shivered uncontrollably, almost passing out from fear. Don't understand what you're saying. Who's Aurum? I don't know him. Still not confessing? I really don't know who Aurum is. I also wish I was innocent, I have no incentive to confess, I want to shift the blame, but the truth is I really did put drugs in the tea. I was just being bold and wanted to play with her. Ah. Chapter 1836. Sean suddenly pressed the blade hard, and it sunk into the waiter's face. There was no blood yet. However, with just a little more pressure from Sean, his face would split open, and blood would gush out. Is your life more important? Or the benefits Orem promised you? Sean asked. Intimidation had always been Sean's forte. The waiter looked at him. Their eyes locked for a few seconds, and his resolve somewhat wavered. Just when Sean thought his threat was about to succeed, he heard the waiter say, Of course my life is important, but I can't find someone to take the blame for me. Mr. Wood, my target was really Ivy. I have nothing to do with your wife. Sean's expression darkened. Where did Aurum find such a tight-lipped person? Was this waiter sent by Aurum to infiltrate the restaurant long ago? A sense of annoyance welled up inside him. Sean grabbed his collar. What would happen after they drank the tea you spiked? You put Aurum and my wife in the same room. What was the plan? Well, speak. I'm not sure. That drug has an aphrodisiac effect. Sean's expression became even more sinister. Tell me the truth. If there are two people and one is sober, they won't be able to control themselves. I'm sure everyone understands what an aphrodisiac is, the waiter answered. Sean raised his hand and threw the waiter out. His body crashed to the ground, and he was left spitting out blood. Surely Orem had been sober. He was pretending to be unconscious. If he analyzed the timeline, he truly would not have enough time to have sex with Gail. Sean only could speculate and had no hard evidence. Deep down he still felt Gail had not sacrificed her purity. Even if the worst had happened and she had truly lost her purity, he would still have her and love her. Fiona asked, What should we do with this waiter? Kill him. The waiter froze and spat out more blood, but he did not plead for mercy. It seemed he was prepared to die. Oram had truly put in a lot of effort to recruit him. Heh. Aren't you afraid? How does a waiter have so much courage? Since you are not afraid to die, I have plenty of ways to torture you, Sean coldly said. Mr. Wood, spare me. Give him to Ivy. Since you keep saying you did this for Ivy, let Ivy decide your fate, Sean instructed. The waiter was stunned again. Before he could regain his senses, the bodyguards had already dragged him away. Fiona respectfully said, Mr. Wood, if there's nothing else I'll leave. Wait. Fiona immediately stopped in his tracks, quietly waiting for Sean's instructions. However, Sean was silent. He walked to the window, playing with the cigarette in his fingers. After a while he finally asked, Do you think, Gail and Oram? Sean did not finish his sentence, but Fiona understood his meaning. Normally, Fiona had no right to inquire about such private matters, let alone express an opinion. However, since Mr. Wood asked, she could only answer. Chapter 1837. Mr. Wood, based on the timeline of events, the testimonies, and the timing, I don't think. Fiona paused. Orem didn't have the time to act. Our bodyguards found the hotel very quickly. We made such a commotion. Orem couldn't have not heard it. After speaking, Fiona glanced at Sean. She wondered if this answer satisfied Mr. Wood. Anyway, it was also truly what she believed. For Mr. Wood, his wife was his life, his love, and his sanctuary. She was sacred. Whoever messed with her would face death. Moreover, after Mr. Wood married, his temperament slowly changed. His wife treated the staff well, as she was a gentle and kind-hearted person. Good deeds should befall good people. They thought the couple would live happily ever after, never expecting such a monstrosity to occur. What's more? Something that Orem planned. Sean remained silent throughout. Eventually, he just waved his hand, signaling for Fiona to leave. Fiona nodded. She knew Mr. Wood needed some time alone. Anything said now would be useless because without concrete evidence, they could not prove to Gail that it was Orem who did it. Sean glanced at the time and turned to leave the room. Had Gailey woken up, or had she not slept at all? Sean opened the study door, only to see Gail standing there. She was barefoot, 
her pajamas slightly wrinkled, her soft hair cascading behind her, her eyes wide open like a startled deer. Sean's heart softened instantly. Gaily, he reached up to pat her head, then pulled her into his arms. Why are you standing alone at the door? Why not come in? She did not speak, stiff all over, her hands cold. When did you wake up? Or... Didn't you sleep? Sean asked. I fell asleep, she answered listlessly. Just for a little while? I had a nightmare. As Gail spoke she snuggled closer to him. Sean sighed softly, feeling a surge of pity that words could not express. He could only tilt his head and kiss her forehead. I had a terrible dream and woke up scared. I felt like it was real, so I didn't dare stay alone in the master bedroom. I came to the study door but I didn't dare disturb you, Gail said. Disturb? Gaily, it's a delight, not a disturbance whenever you appear before me. She nodded repeatedly, her hair rustling against his shirt. She could not be as carefree and intimate with Sean as before, showing him her private side without a care in the world. What was destroyed last night was not just their relationship, but also her pride. Now, Gail kept second-guessing her actions. Would she annoy Sean? Did he mind her touch? When he held her, kissed her, did the image of her and Oram lying on the bed together cross his mind? Gail was cautious. Sean saw through her thoughts. He understood. He did not expose it. He knew Gail's worries, but words could not express them properly. No matter how much he said, she might think he was just comforting her. Only actions could prove everything. Chapter 1838 I'll stay with you for a while longer. I won't work. I'll come to the bedroom, Sean said. Work? Work isn't important, you are. Sean bent down, lifting Gail, and carried her back to the master bedroom. He held her foot, reminding her. You can't run around barefoot like this anymore. What if something cuts your foot? What if you catch a cold? She had slippers right beside the bed, but she did not wear them. I just couldn't wait to find you, Gail answered softly, but her fragile voice melted his heart. Silly Gail. Sean lay down with her on the bed, accompanying her for a while longer. With him there, she felt safe. As they lay together, Sean fell asleep first. He had not slept all night and had stayed up in the study. He was exhausted. Plus, with his beloved woman in his arms he quickly relaxed. Feeling Sean's breath gradually calming, Gail raised her head watching him sleep. There was a hint of stubble on his chin. He had not had time to shave. It was a bit rough to the touch, she gently stroked it. Sean I love you so much but this time I've wronged you, she murmured. What should I do? I've let you down. I can't get past this, actually I don't want a divorce. I don't want Joshua and Nicole to grow up without a complete family. I don't know how to face you, let alone the two children. Can love overcome everything including loyalty? But the foundation of love is loyalty. Gail knew Sean did not blame her because she was deceived, completely unaware of what was happening. However, being unaware did not mean it did not happen. She minded it a lot. He would mind it too, but he would hide it well, not letting her see it at all. Gail's hands gently stroked his brows and eyes. She really loved him so much, they had been married for many years, experiencing storms and trials together. They could not be separated from each other anymore. Gail would not be attracted to any other man anymore. Sean would not like any other woman anymore. They were the most compatible couple. With Gail in his arms Sean slept soundly, and his guard was down. Gail slowly and gently moved out of his embrace, getting out of bed and leaving the master bedroom. Ma'am! The housekeeper saw her coming downstairs and hurriedly approached her. Are you looking for food? Yes. Regardless, she still needed to eat. It was already noon. The weather was nice today, and the sun was shining brightly in the sky, glaring on the ground, a bit dazzling. Gail stood by the window raising her hand to shield her eyes. The sunlight filtered through her fingers. How nice, the clear autumn weather, the beautiful sunshine, the filth and disgrace of last night seemed to have never existed. It seemed almost as if she had never gone to that seedy motel. When she was young, she stayed in the orphanage, but she had no memories of it. Later, when she joined the warm family, they were reasonably well off so she did not really suffer hardships and went to such seedy areas. Gail still felt cold. She walked out of the villa and stood in the garden. Ma'am, there's a visitor, saying he wants to see you. A servant ran over to report. 
Chapter 1839. Who is it? Mr. Lefting. Gail trembled. How did he end up here? The last person she wanted to see right now was him. Ma'am, do you wish to see him? The servant, observing her expression, asked, Should I decline saying you're not at home? I'm standing in the garden. He can see me. Gail sighed. She did not know why Oram had come to see her. She did not need his apology. It would not change things. Oram stood outside, silently watching Gail's silhouette. Just looking at her from a distance made him feel she was exquisite. The image of her sleeping next to him involuntarily surfaced in his mind. Gail exuded a faint fragrance not from perfume. It was her natural scent that was intoxicatingly alluring. Her skin was fair and delicate. Oram thought if Mr. Wood's bodyguards had arrived five minutes later, he would have truly been able to feel her insides. He had dreamt of tasting her. It did not matter. Everyone believed he had already had Gail, including Gail herself. Only he knew the truth. This time, he had almost succeeded. Next time, he would possess her completely. He would be closer to success the more he tried. A creaking sound snapped Oram out of his thoughts. Gail emerged. Aram, are you looking for me? She looked at him, expressionless. Aram seemed hesitant, unsure how to start. He even took a step back, afraid of being too close and causing her discomfort. Gail felt bitter and distressed. How would she interact with Aram in the future? How should she behave? Gail did not want to see Aram, not because she hated him, but because every time she saw him, she would be reminded of that night. She could not shake off her trauma. After a while, Aram finally spoke. Are you okay, Gail? Gail replied. No. How could I be okay? Me neither. I, I'm sorry. If it's just an apology, you can leave. I don't need it, Gail said. Oram looked at her, somewhat anxious. Do you hate me? I hate myself. Gail, you're not at fault. In this whole matter you did nothing wrong. Don't blame yourself. It's my fault. I failed to protect, Oram said. Enough, Gail interrupted. She did not want to hear this, repeatedly bringing up the details of last night, was just tormenting her. Okay, I won't mention it anymore. I heard Mr. Wood has already found the suspect, Oram continued. What? Gail was surprised. You didn't know? I came from the restaurant. The manager said Mr. Wood's subordinates took away a waiter who confessed to tampering with the tea. Gail had no idea about this. Chapter 1840 Sean never mentioned it to her, perhaps fearing it would upset her. A waiter? How could someone so insignificant do so much? Gail asked. Just thinking about it made it seem unlikely. To be able to drug the tea, knock out Paul, and transfer four of them to a small hotel couldn't be done without careful planning and flawless execution. One small misstep and the whole thing would be exposed. Oram's eyes flickered. He knew Gail would not believe it, and Sean would not either. However, he could only get the waiter to be the scapegoat. He had already destroyed all other clues. No matter how hard Sean looked, all clues would point to the waiter, and Oram would be off the hook. I'm not sure about the specifics, but the waiter confessed, Oram replied. Gail asserted firmly, No, it can't be the waiter, there must be someone behind him. There must be. Last time Sean and Ivy. She was about to mention the intimate photos taken by the paparazzi but suddenly stopped herself in time. There was no need to let Oram know about this. Oram knew everything but deliberately asked, Sean and Ivy? What happened to them? Nothing. Gail shook her head, refusing to elaborate. I took Ivy home. She was unstable, and she probably won't be able to work properly for a while. As for the leading actress, as long as she's willing to act, the role will always be there for her. Gail clenched her fists. Paul is a beast! She used to admire this young director thinking he was talented and a good person, but she did not expect Paul to take advantage of Ivy when she was unconscious. Ivy could have been untouched. Paul did not even drink the tea. Gail, I introduced him to Ivy. I was the one who facilitated their meeting. I never thought Paul would do something like that, Oram said with deep remorse. After a few seconds of silence, Oram continued, Of course, I'm no better than him. Just as despicable, just as beastly. Can we change the director? I think Ivy can't continue working with Paul. She can't face him. Gail asked. Although she had known Ivy briefly, she understood Ivy's character. She was strong, 
independent, with a righteous mindset. She relied on her own efforts to act well and carve out a place in the entertainment industry rather than sleep around. Ivy just wanted to make this movie, but she accidentally slept with Paul. In the future if any rumors spread, others might think that she had slept her way into the role. It would be hard to explain. We can't change him, Oram shook his head. The director is the essence of the movie. How can we just change him? Actors can be changed, producers can be changed, even assistant directors can be changed, but the director's position is unshakable. Besides, Oram could not possibly replace Paul. Investing in this movie was his hush money to Paul. Paul got the investment and slept with Ivy, so he was indebted to Oram and would never betray him. What do we do then? Ivy definitely wants to act in the movie, but she doesn't want to face Paul. Just like she did not want to face Oram. Gail, you're still thinking about caring for Ivy, what about yourself? Oram sighed. What are you going to do, what about me? Gail fell silent, they were at a dead end. 